Hi, I'm Klaus Hermann, founder and editor of Farbspielfoto.com, where we make your photography simple. This tutorial video is an excerpt of my personal workflow courses for Lightroom and Photoshop. If you're watching this prior to September 15th, 2015, you have the unique chance of snatching both courses as a free bonus. Just stick around till the end of the video where I will tell you how. And now, have fun with the tutorial. Now, what I really would like to do is to edit the uh, clouds and the blue parts in the sky separately, okay? And to do that, I'm going to create another group inside that group. So, inside the sky group, we now have another group here, which I would call clouds, okay? Those, this is these are only going to be the adjustments for the clouds, not for the blue parts. Now, how am I going to create a mask for the clouds? Again, I'm going to the channels palette here, clicking through those different uh, channels. And I'm, I'm looking for um, a layer or a, an, an alpha channel that has a nice separation between the blue parts and the white parts in the sky. So the, the, the blue sky and the clouds. And I think the red channel is good for this. So I'm going to do the same again here. Create a copy. Go to that copy. Invoke the levels command. And bring, on, bring in those black and white points. Up to the point where those clouds still have nice fuzzy edges. Because you can go all the way uh, over here and you see that the edges of those clouds don't really look nice anymore. So don't push it too far, just to the point where you see those nice uh, fluffy edges of those clouds still. And also don't bring the white point all the way uh, up to the left. This is going to be a very subtle um, adjustment here. Click OK. Again, I'm going to create a selection from that layer. Go back to the Layers palette and apply that mask to our Clouds uh, group. Now, what's happening here is now we have a group for the sky and a group for the clouds. Both have their layer masks. And what that, is, that essentially does, it, it only lets things through where both of these masks are white or not black. Okay? So, what that means is I mean, let me let me bring that a little bit further out here. What that means is that when I look at this mask, I don't have to care in any way for all those regions because those are uh, hidden by that mask in the upper group. Okay, I'm only concentrating on the sky right now. Anything else, I don't care for. And I would like to refine that mask a little bit more. And the way I'm doing this is again by choosing a brush, the brush tool, choosing a very flow, low flow value. 5% usually works pretty well. Um, and I'm going to put the mode into overlay. Now what overlay does is, I make this a very soft brush here. What the overlay mass, uh, mode does is when I paint with black on that uh, sky, let me show you, this is going to affect the dark parts only, not the, the bright parts. When I paint with white on that mask, it's going to affect the lighter parts only. And by carefully brushing on that mask, I'm going to increase the contrast between the, the black parts and the white parts to an extent where they really present a mask, masking out the clouds or the blue, par uh, blue parts respectively, okay? So let me just, I'm going to undo this. I'm going to lower the flow value even more to 1%. Um, I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. So brush tool selected, black is the, o is the color. And I have one of my quick keys on my, oh, sorry, it doesn't work for this. So. What is X? No. <laughs> so the, the um, input box for the flow value was still active. We need to 
push return here. That's one of the pitfalls that you can fall into easily. So all the input that I just gave uh, Photoshop went into that input box. That was my mistake. So what I was going to show you, I've mapped one of the quick keys of my tablet to the X key, which actually changes between the, the switches the foreign background colors because that's what I want to, what I need to do this right now to be able to switch quickly between black and white as my foreground color. So I'm going to use black. I'm going to paint on that on those dark parts, and you're going to see very slowly that those dark parts become darker. Okay, since I have a flow value of only 1%, those changes don't happen quickly, but they happen very slowly, which gives me a lot of control over the amount of the effect that I am applying here. So I'm trying to make those dark w uh, regions darker without affecting too much of those light regions in the sky. Then I'm going to switch my foreground color to white and I'm doing the opposite. Painting on those clouds and making them a bit brighter without affecting the dark parts. I'm still taking care not to brush too much on those dark parts because most of those parts are not really black. So they're somewhere in the gray area and I don't want to make them too bright because when I switch back to, br to black as a, as a foreground color, I want to darken those again. Okay, so it's a constant switch back and forth between black and white in overlay mode. And I'm working to just increase the contrast between the blue parts in the sky and the clouds so that a nice mask is created. And that can take a while, obviously. But you have to be rather meticulous here to get the contrast of that mask perfect. Okay, black again. Now you're seeing some, some haloing here, so brushing over those regions some more to get rid of that. And always remember that the, the trees and the tower and anything else that's in the um, in the image don't really matter right now. Okay, so zoom out to get all the, the parts of the image here actually. And as I said, this is a process that can take some time, but it's a very nice way of very gently and very carefully working on that contrast of that cloud layer mask. Okay, I think that's enough. So we now have two masks, which essentially um, um, intersect. So everything that's white in both masks so is going to be affected by anything that I put into this cloud group. Anything that's black in, in either of the masks is not going to be affected. And I'm using this. If you're watching this prior to September 15th, 2015, you're lucky. Because you can snatch your free copy of my personal workflow courses for Lightroom and Photoshop, and here's how it works. Simply head over to the link below where the 5-day deal team organizes the biggest bundle sale in the history of photography. It's running between September 10th and 15th, 2015, and this is your unique chance to get a huge bundle of high-class photography education and tools from the world's best photographers at an insane discount. No matter which type of photography you're into, this is the best investment you can make in your own photography. And in addition to that, you can even win over $50,000 worth in prices. If you purchase the bundle through this link, I will send you the download links to my full personal workflow courses within 24 hours. But please do make sure that you use this link to start your checkout process for the bundle. Otherwise, I will not have your details and I cannot send you anything. So, 
I hope I'll see you for the 5-day deal event. Take care and have fun.